Thanks very much to the organizers for organizing this uh, fantastic conference, and thank you for coming. Okay, so my talk is Surface Systems of Links, so uh, I'm going to be interested in a link, and it's going to be uh, an M component link in the three sphere, and they're always going to be ordered and oriented links. Uh, so what's a surface system? Well, it's just a collection of Seifert surfaces for the components. So uh, I have sigma i in S3, and it's going to be usual, compact, and oriented. Um, I'm not going to require necessarily that it's connected. Uh, and the boundary of sigma i is, of course, uh, the ith component of the link. And we, so we have a, a bunch of these surfaces. They're embedded, but they might intersect each other. Um, certainly, if the link has non-trivial linking number, the surfaces are going to have to intersect the other components of the link. So we should require that they intersect transversely and in uh, at most triple points. Uh, so that's what I call a, a surface system is just then the union of the um, of the sigma j. Yeah, not no, not necessarily. Yeah. Poten potentially, it's, it's allowed, but I mean, you can also band them together, but it was, I don't think it's going to matter that much, actually, for the talk. <laughs> the surface systems have no other information other than just like the surface themselves. And an orientation? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so which, yes. OK, so. Um, oh, there's, there's one other bit of information as well that you should, you should always remember. So, um, I mean, we should consider the, I want to consider the intersections and the triple intersections as um, oriented submanifolds of the three sphere. So I want to remember the orientations. I, mean, I have orientation of the link, and that gives me an orientation of these surfaces. OK, if there's closed components, add orientations of those. And um, then I get some induced um, orientations on the uh, intersections and triple intersections. So the question I'm interested in is um, the following. Given two links, um, they're both M component. Do they admit homeomorphic surface systems? So that's a geometric question that you could ask, you might be interested in. And you know the, the enemy gives you a gives you a geometric question, and if you can identify that, if you can answer this question with some sort of readily computable algebraic invariant, then you're happy. Uh, in this case, the enemy's name is Chris Davis, and he's also his own worst enemy, as you'll see, <laughs> because <laughs> he he helped answer the question. Um, okay, so what exactly does this mean? I mean, we should we should be a bit more precise. So. What, what, I, what I mean is that is it, there exists, I, it does, there exists uh, a homeomorphism from this two complex to 
I mean, does there exist sigma and sigma prime for um, uh, L and L prime and uh, let's go down here. With, with um, and I just want it to restrict on each of the uh, components and each of the intersections and each of the triple intersections. have to be orientation preserving homeomorphisms. So that's just a, a little bit more detail on what I, what I really mean by homeomorphic uh, surface systems. Maybe. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if that's the, if that's equivalent or not. Because this, this homeomorphism f has nothing to do with S three, right? No, f. It's, it's just an absolute. It's, it's whether or not the the uh, surfaces the surface systems abstractly can be identified by a homeomorphism. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's if, if if the linking number is non-trivial, that's um, uh, inevitable. I mean, if it's going to intersect the link. Yeah. Just to clarify, if you have a non-instead of a link, the question is completely trivial. If you have a not, yeah, that's that's a good start. Yeah. If you if you have a if you have a not instead of a link, then any two knots admit a homeomorphic surface system because you can always they they have a, a common stabilization, right? So yeah, for for one. For one component links, it's easy. For two component links, it's just the linking number. So it sort of gets into, well, you'll see. <laughs> it gets interesting when you have at least three components. Uh, so the, yeah, so the theorem. And this is with um, Chris Davis, uh, Matthias Nagel, Patrick Orson, oh, and Patrick Orson. Is that um, so? I'm going to I'm going to state the theorem, and there'll be a there'll be an invariant, and then I'll explain the invariant for the next half an hour. Um, so uh, let uh, have m component links with the same. Um, same linking numbers. So the same, having the same linking numbers is sort of a, a fairly obvious necessary condition, uh, just because um, the intersections between a, of a link with the, with the other surfaces um, is just the the algebraic count of those intersections will be. Um, preserved in, under a homeomorphism, so the linking numbers had better be preserved. Uh, then. So, admit homeomorphic If and only if, and then um, there's something that we call the the refined uh, triple linking numbers. Uh, a 
agree, so mu of L, which is equals mu of L prime in, and then this is, a, this is an invariant and it lives in um, some uh, in interesting value group. So roughly, roughly, this is take the collection of triple linking numbers. Well, if there's m components, then there's m choose three triple linking numbers, and um, which I'll define this all um, shortly. Uh, and then there's some indeterminacies which come from the linking numbers. So you take the collection of all the linking numbers, and they have to agree modulo the indeterminacy set. Um, so, right, there's the. So that's. Uh, there's a statement, but until I tell you what mu l and mu l is, then it doesn't mean that much. So, um, yeah. so first of all, like I said, this is the uh, the sum of the. E i wedge e j wedge e k. So I want to I want to write it in terms of uh, exterior algebra. So think of uh, so this is just a, a way of a, a bookkeeping of a collection of uh, possible length three multi indices from the numbers one to m, and uh, and then I think about that is as a in a third exterior product of third exterior path um, z to the m, which is. Isomorphic to ZM choose three, and then uh, let's just let's denote f s comma r. So s comma r is an ordered pair. Um, so s is not equal to r, and they are in between one and m. So there's there's how I'm going to represent a basis for um, uh, Z M m minus 1, and then this m, the indeterminacy, is, um, that's, I, I mean, just think of this as you know, a matrix or a linear map, whatever. Uh, this is, now let's get this right. Um, so this is, So I said this depends on the linking numbers, and it depends on them in the following way. E i wedge s wedge e r. Uh, so, uh, the, so the point is that there's some there's something that you can do to change these invariants, but they don't. But it, when you do one of these changes. You don't just change one of the triple linking numbers, but you change several of them all at once in, in one go. And here's how you change. And the way that you change them depends on the linking numbers in some way. And here's, the, here's how you change them. You change all the, you know, for a given S and R, you change the ISR um, triple linking number by the linking number of LI and LR. <laughs> so that's a bit of a. I'll explain where this comes from, and I'll explain the definition of mu i j k. Or I'll explain my favourite definition of mu i j k soon. Why is there an f there? F is, just, f is just a name for a basis Why element. Why is it just not m of s comma r? What, what difference does it make? I mean, the right hand side only depends on s and r. F is an oh, do you want, uh, I don't know. I just I just gave the basis a name. I mean, it's it's a, what? Okay. So it's, I could, it, it's a completely irrelevant letter, yeah. It's just, I don't know. I'm used to in linear algebra, like. Okay. It's just confusing if the right hand side doesn't have it. Uh, I understand. It's, it's a placeholder. It's, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, I'll just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, I mean, unless anyone's does, does <laughs> What's wrong? 
L I L R. There's an I. There's a sum from I equals one to M. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you. Okay, so this, the, the next thing I, just, I want to point out is that this, um, considering the, the triple null invariance uh, modulo, this sort of refined indeterminacy actually does give a refinement on like, the classical indeterminacy of Miller's invariance. So, um, oh, let's just say. Refines. Um, So uh, let's let's consider. Um, Yeah, okay, well, I mean, just, I'll, I'll explain exactly where this comes from geometrically, so it'll, it'll make more sense then, hopefully. Um, but, okay, <laughs> I'm giving you the statement first, and then I'm gonna explain it, um, which. Uh, so, so let's consider um, four component links, and let's suppose that the linking number is one for all i and j, then, the, um, the classical um, mu bar invariant of ah, uh, let's get this wrong. Of the uh, of a of a link uh, lives in it's it's well defined in Z modulo some uh, some indeterminacy where this. is the greatest common divisor of the linking number of i and j and the linking number of i and l i and l k and l j and l k. So in, our, so in this case, um, so here, uh, this delta l is, of course, these, these linking numbers are one, so the greatest common divisor is one, and um, the, so, uh, Z modulo delta is uh, trivial, but in this case, if you if you figure, if you compute this group, but um, Z to the four modulo whatever this m is, uh, Z to the twelve it turns out to be isomorphic to Z. So there's a whole uh, this I mean, this group this this is this refined thing is is much bigger. And oh, I forgot to say that this was this was observed by uh, Levine in the context of the work on the classification of four component links up to link homotopy that was mentioned yesterday. So um, this, but uh, yeah, oh, no. okay, top. Need to hold them. Okay. 
And this, this can also be realized, Every, everything in here can be realized. All you have to do is like, take your favorite, the simplest link, sort of a chain with, um, where all the links have uh, linking number one, and then band three of the components into a Borromean rings. And you get a, uh, you can realize this thing. But okay, I've been talking about um, triple linking numbers, so now I want to give you a definition. But um, rather, than, rather than talking about the classical uh, definition of Miller's invariance, I prefer my, my favorite definition, which is sort of a geometric way of calculating them due to uh, Miller and Melvin. So this is the... <laughs> I should just switch. <laughs> so this, so, so they came up with this um, this cool way of seeing uh, of of computing the uh, the triple linking number, and it's it's something that you can really you can sort of kind of really do from a diagram without um, without too much work. So we like it a lot, and it's also it uses surface systems, so it's it's quite good for for proving our theorem. Um, so, there's, so I like it. Um, so the first thing is let a, okay, so sigma is um, surface system for L. And uh, there's, we, we then define this quantity Tijk, and that's, uh, that's sort of the easy definition, which is just the, but the signed count of uh, triple points in uh, between this, the components i, j, and k. Uh, and then um, now there's a, there's a more complicated uh, part of this. Um, of this definition, but it's the it's the part that's really sort of algorithmic. So uh, you take here's here's uh, this circle represents Li, and here in the middle is uh, maybe I don't like maybe this is too small. Nice and big. So there's uh, his sigma i on the boundary is li. And so I'm, I'm thinking about like, this as an abstract surface now. Of course, it's, it's embedded in some complicated way in S3. But all I care about for the purpose of this definition is uh, the surface. And then I, I care about the pattern of how the other surfaces intersect it. So other surfaces are going to intersect it in lines. And they might look like clasps, or they might look like sort of ribbon intersections. Uh, things like this, and maybe this one corresponds to the, there, there's sort of the intersection of sigma j, or let's call that sigma i1, sigma i2, or j1, etc. And now all I do is I take a, I choose a base point. There's my base point. And there's my orientation. And I go around, and as I go around the surface, I just write how does the, this link uh, intersect the other surfaces. And, and I write something which we, which uh, they call a clasp word. Uh, and so this is just a, a word in, um, in these, uh, the letters one, one up to M. Um, well, OK, it can't include the I. Um, because the surface doesn't intersect itself. And, and they have an exponent depend according to whether it's a positive or a negative intersection. So um, wi is i1 to the epsilon uh, 1, 2, 
or I call it J. Actually, so there's a uh, there's this word that you can write down from a. Um, okay, let me. I know. And then I'll do a I'll do a running example over here whilst we're. Uh, So, yeah. So here's a slightly funny diagram of the bromine rings. Um, I, ju I just pulled it out like this because I want to, I want to imagine a very obvious surface system, uh, a C complex, in fact, where, where we have uh, just, so just take, take the disk here, take the disk here, and then take, um, take this disk here, and so we see uh, clasp intersections between these services here and here. And then uh, let's see, this can be component one, this can be component two, and this can be component three. And here are my base points and orientations. And so when I'm going around uh, component one, I just go through sigma uh, sigma 2 and then sigma 2 inverse and then I'm done. So this is just 2, 2 inverse and W, W3, I go around and I go through 2 and then back through 2 the other way. So that's just also uh, 2, 2 inverse. But W2 is more interesting. So W2 goes through, um, I go through component 3 through component one, then back through component three, and then back through component one. Okay, so we're just reading off uh, class words. And then there's this quantity called uh, ERS by Mel and Melvin of the of a class word, and this is the um, the signed number of times um, that R occurs before uh, S. Uh, so, in this um, in this example, um, E. Uh, ERS of W1 and W3 are boring because there's no um, there's no time that one index occurs before or after the other one. Uh, so those are zero for all R and S. So let's look at uh, E. Um, well, the interesting things are E13 of W2. So now let's look at this. So three, three occurs before one here. And, and then three occurs before one with a minus sign. So that, so that, those are zero. And here, three occurs before uh, one, but both have a minus sign, so I get a, a one. So, uh, oh, that was three one I was just doing. So that's, that overall is a one, and I could also do one three, 
which would be uh, like one occurs before three here with a uh, with a minus one, and okay, one doesn't that one doesn't occur before any three. Okay, so there's this. There's this procedure to, um, to produce, and, and it's, it's very simple to do from a link diagram to produce these numbers. Um, and they depend on the class words, so it's sort of the, the combinatorics of how the surfaces, how a link as it intersects the other surfaces as it goes around. And then we can define this quantity, mijk, that depends on sigma, and it depends on the base points. Uh, and that is um, eij of wk plus e, um, let's get the, uh, ejk of wi plus eki of wj. And then finally, we can define uh, mu as of, which, of L, which a priori is a function of, um, the, well, it is a function of the choice of surface system and the choice of base points, um, which is just given by, uh, so for each, for each i, j, k, I take um, this m, and then I subtract off the t, i, j, k, which was the count of triple points. And then let's, let's Consider this um, for a, as a as a let's take the collection of such um, things for all triple indices i j k. So that's the that's the Mellor Melvin definition of the triple linking numbers. Is this this sort of nice contribution from the triple intersection points, and then this slightly mysterious contribution from the m i j k. And this is this I mean this comes from thinking about the Magnus expansion of the longitude. If you, if you know about the other definition of, um, I mean, the, the classical definition of Milner's invariance. Are you uh, summing over all these terms? Or? No, it's a collection. It's, it's an ordered. Oh, okay. it's, this is in, uh, in Z, M choose three. Uh, where am I? Oh, yeah. Mike, um, this definition, does it take into account uh, this is this. So so far, I've defined something that depends on a choice of surface system and a base point, and it and it's well defined in that triple, but it's not yet a link invariant. Uh, yeah, I was trying to I was trying to not go too far into it, but it, you just I mean if if a if so, if this if a, if an index occurs before the other index, then you just take the product of the exponents. No, no. Yeah, and that, that was that was a bit uh, that was misleading. It's not it's not always symmetric. It's. Uh, the, the, there is a symmetry property of the of, of the whole thing modulo the indeterminacies, but before the indeterminacies, no. Yeah, so, so I could have taken all of them. I could have allowed, you, you, you're saying I, I didn't actually take um, all possible triple indices. I, I just took like half of them. And, and, but that turns out to be enough after the indeterminacies. But it's not all of them, it's not all of them yet. It's just, it's just that we, I know that later on, I'm going to have all the information I need here. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, yeah, it could be. I mean, I don't want to carry around more information than necessary. Any time before. Yeah, that was yeah, that was why I did the examples to try and yeah, any any time they did it. At some point. There's a I mean I'm not writing down the um the rigorous definition of how you would do that. No no it doesn't it doesn't depend on that, no. Okay, so you can collect You could you could yeah, you can, yeah. But I thought if I, but then you, then it wouldn't have corresponded to the picture, so I didn't know. Uh, 
Okay, so the proposition is no longer a surprise because Miriam, Miriam already asked, but um, if <laughs> uh, that this thing, um, this, if you consider this in, um, in the quotient that I introduced before, um, of uh, uh, sigma and b. Okay, now, uh, next is I want to explain how to see the uh, how to see the indeterminacies. Does that mean top one? Sorry. So remember there was this formula that you all loved. Uh, okay, now there's a picture. So let, here, this is a this is a segment. This is a, of uh, of Li, and it has a. Um, let's try. And here is um, here is a, a, a sort of a part of sigma i. Okay, and let's assume that L i intersects. We, we we really if we want something interesting, we want there to be some non-trivial linking number between L i and L r. So let's draw. Uh, here is a part of uh, there's L r and. Here, kind of, so I'm sort of imagining this one as being horizontal and this one as being vertical, and there's a clasp intersection uh, between these two surfaces, and so here is a part of uh, sigma r. Okay, so they're sitting there happily, and um, over here somewhere, not necessarily anywhere near, is ls, and it's got a it's got a, a Seifert surface, uh, sigma s. And now, this, I, so I'm, I'm not going to tell you about independence of the, of the choice of base point, but let's change the surface system in some kind of essential way. And um, one, of the, one of the most obvious ways you can change the surface system is I can take the torus, that's the boundary of the regular neighborhood of Li, and I can, uh, I can connect some into it. So let's, let me try and uh, draw that torus, draw, draw the section of the torus that appears in the picture more accurately. Um, and that kind of goes down here. particular, uh, that torus is going to intersect this surface in a circle here. And it's going to intersect this surface in a line here. I can do that, but I, let's, let's just tube it in, yeah. So I changed sigma s by adding in, so somehow sigma s has been changed to sigma s connect some uh, t, I'm going to call it tr. So this, let's call that thing tr, ti, i, i, i. There we go. Yeah, so I added a, a neighborhood of, of i to it. And then what happens is, uh, so, so this new surface doesn't intersect any of the link components. It's just, it just goes around the boundary of one of them. So the, MI, the clasp words don't change, and therefore the MIJKs don't change. But 
as you see here, there's a new triple point. So that means that the, um, the, the number of uh, the triple points change uh, by, by one here. And if you think about this, this was just a, a, a local picture corresponding to an intersection between LR and, um, and sigma i. Uh, but, but the number of such intersections that occur, algebraically speaking, is the linking number. So, uh, so the, the change to the, the number of triple points and therefore to the triple linking number ISR is, the, um, is exactly the linking number, namely the number of times that this will happen. So if that picture is uh, vaguely understandable, then this, hopefully, that means this formula becomes slightly less mysterious. Modulo signs. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> I'm making no attempt whatsoever to get the signs right here, so you, you just have to believe me on those and read the paper if you really care. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now how am I doing for time because I don't want us to miss lunch? 15, okay, great. So I have just about enough time to, uh, so, now, so now so far we've, I've explained the problem, I've stated the theorem and uh, I've defined the invariant and rough, said something about why it's well defined. Um, so the next stage is to tell you something about the proof. So. One direction, if you, if you use this definition of triple linking numbers, one direction of our theorem is, um, is pretty easy. So remember the theorem said, um, if I, the, the links, links, two links admit homeomorphic surface systems, if and only if these um, uh, triple linking, the set of triple linking numbers agree. But now we define the set of triple linking numbers using the surface system. And so if you, if you think, think back through that, okay, it was a number of triple points, and then it was these clas this clasp word, um, kind of combinatorial data, and there was some orientation stuff, but at the beginning I said you have to remember the orientations of the uh, intersections. So, uh, so then, so that's, that's what I want to say. That, like, um, that, that means that the, um, if you have homeomorphic surface systems, you can just compute from, that, from the, the surface system data now this, this triple set of triple linking numbers. So, it, one direct, so, so one direction is now kind of immediate. Uh, so homeomorphic surface systems implies that, actually it's, it, it, this tells you that um, if you actually use the homeomorphic surface systems to compute, then you get that the, uh, you get equality of the lifted thing. So here I'm using tilde to mean just, just the, the, the invariant lifted in uh, ZM choose three defined by the choice of linking numbers. And you can use a consistent choice of base point because you just take the base point and you send it via the homeomorphism uh, to the other one. So, uh, so you really just get uh, sort of easily now, by the definition, uh, one direction of the theorem. Okay, so how about the other direction? And this is more interesting. So now suppose... But now I'm only going to assume uh, that they're equal modulo the indeterminacy coming from the linking numbers. Um, so to, to prove this, this, now this, this is where um, I don't know how to sort of do a direct three-dimensional proof. So uh, instead, we're going to consider the Bordism groups. So here uh, is uh, a nice object, uh, omega-3 over of BZM or the M torus. So that's the uh, Bordism group of uh, closed three manifolds um, over let's use uh, everybody's favorite model for BZM which is the uh, the M torus 
So here I mean, okay, two, two three manifolds, they have to come with a map to, to this space, um, which is basically the same as a, homeomorph a homomorphism from the fundamental group to ZM. And uh, they, then they're equivalent if, they're, um, if there's a four-dimensional manifold which co-bounds the two three manifolds and the given maps on the, uh, to, Z to BZM extend. So it's sort of a... So there's the uh, canonical picture for uh, understanding this Bordism group. And oh no, so so why am I talking about that? Well, oh no. if you remember uh, your algebraic topology, this um, this Bordism group can be computed by uh, well, several methods. Uh, for example, uh, there's a, a tier hertz of spectral sequence for generalized homology theories. And in this case, it's nice and easy because uh, the bordism of a point is trivial in dimensions one, two, and three. So, uh, It's actually, it's actually isomorphic to the, um, the three-dimensional homology of this group, which is, uh, and this um, not, a not completely unfamiliar object from this talk, uh, isomorphic to z to the m choose three. And how do, you, um, how do you decide which element you have in this group? Well, let's, um, let's, work, let's think about a particular, a particular uh, closed three-manifold that, that, that we like, that I want to decide whether or not it's zero. So here's a, um, here let's, so let, I, I'll write, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write XL for the, um, the exterior of a link. That's a, that's a new, even if it doesn't look like one. So just imagine that it's, that it's written like a new. Uh, and let's take XL and XL prime, and let's glue them together along their common boundary. We take, our, we take our two links that we're interested in, and maybe that one gets a minus sign. Uh, and we've, we, we gave the links an ordering and an orientation, so there's now up to, up to isotopy, there's a canonical way to glue them together. And, okay, a link, pi one of a link maps to its, maps to its homology, which is z to the m. So I get a map, on, on this side, I get a map to bz to the m, and on this side, I get a map to bz to the m. Uh, so, so here, there's a, there's a, for each of these parts individually, there's a canonical homotopy class of maps, which I just described. Um, but there's some choice in how you glue, glue it together to make, um, uh, to actually get a, get a map to BZM on the whole thing. And that, cho that choice is, is sort of important as part of the, related to the indeterminacies. But let's suppose that we made such a choice. I mean, in a minute, I'm gonna just, um, I'll, I'll explain how to make a choice using a surface system to, to get a, consistent map. So, um, but let's assume we have such a thing, then um, what we can do is, so let's call, let's just call the whole map um, now capital F, and let's consider um, S M minus one in S M, and take F inverse of that, and that is what I'm gonna call um, S. So I take the ith one, and I call that SI, so missing out the, uh, the ith coordinate. Uh, and that gives me, a, well, it's a co-dimension one, so this gives me a surface in my three-manifold. Uh, and now I can just look at this collection of surfaces. S1, S1, thank you, yeah. S1 to the M, S1 to the M, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. And this thing, I'm going to give this a name as well. This is called M, M subscript L comma L prime. So 
So this is, this, uh, is null bordant uh, if and only if all triple uh, intersection numbers vanish. So the cool thing is that this bordism group is detected by triple intersection numbers. And oh well, we've had we we we've talked about triple intersection numbers before, so you can see why this might be relevant. Um, But, okay, the triple intersection numbers weren't the only thing. There were these pesky MIJKs, and we have to worry about those. So, um, <clears throat> but let's do a, um, let's do sort of a wishful thinking exercise first of all. So, uh, suppose that we had um, surface systems with, um, and then I want them to have Suppose I can get surface systems with matching class words and equal uh, equal triple intersection numbers. Then what I can do is take those surface systems and uh, now consider them in um, in this manifold, so I have these. I have not, now. I have my my surface system here, sigma, and my surface system here, sigma prime. So I, I take my manifolds and I glue them glue them together, and I glue together the surface systems. And I can, and because they have matching class words, uh, that means I can arrange the surface systems to glue together. Whether or not you can glue them together nicely is just a, a function of that combinatorics of the uh, that the class words measure. So. Um, And now um, I can use these, these surface systems to construct a map from um, this thing like this. And what I do is I just take, I take the surface and I thicken it, and then here's, my, here's, here's each surface, and then I consider a thickening. And um, so there's my there's a sigma i, and that thickening coordinate gets mapped around one of the s ones of the m torus, and then when I have two surfaces that intersect, then the two thickenings um, sort of, there's, there's like a square here where there's two thickenings intersect, and that gets mapped over a two cell of the m torus, and then when I have a triple intersection, that region gets mapped over a three cell of the three torus. So so a surface system gives rise to a a choice of homotopy class of maps like this. And then with respect to that map, so using, so using f um, sigma sigma prime, um, and uh, we get a, then implies a, is it's null bordant with uh, f. Okay, so why does it, why do I want a null bordism? So let's let's now think about a null bordism as um, as a bordism rel boundary between XL and XL prime, and I've got a, uh, a I've got my sigma in here, um, whose boundary is is XL, and now I can I can take my surface my my four manifold, and I can I can alter it so that. The, it's, it just consists of two handle attaching maps, and I can, I'm doing that by using the fact that it maps to BZM, and then I can, uh, the two handle attaching maps are all null homologous. And that means that I can take my surface anytime a, a two handle attaching map intersects a surface, and I can just tube the surface along that attaching map. So it states I can stabilize uh, sigma by tubing it along the attaching maps for the two handles. And this is, so there's some two handles associated to this W uh, attaching curves. And then uh, once you've done that, you can now just take your surface and 
it just you can sweep it through the borderism. So it misses all it misses all the two handles of the cobordism, and that means the same surface just occurs here. Yeah, and, and for some reason we call this sweeping. So imagine taking the surface and sweeping it through. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so sweep sigma to uh, x l prime. And that means that you, you now have that surface and its boundary is XL prime and it's homeomorphic, homeomorphic copy of the one you started with. So the punchline is, I mean, well, if you can, if you can arrange this condition uh, where the class words match and the TIJKs are equal, then you get a bordism and then you can sweep the surface through the bordism and then you get that they, they must have been homeomorphic to start with. Um, so now I just have one more picture to draw to explain how to achieve that condition. So first of all, OK, we're given some, we're given some surface systems. And, um, and they, have, they have equal invariance in the modulo of the indeterminacies. So, but, but we know that we can realize the indeterminacies By, um, by torus sums. So the, the, is it still up there? Yeah, that picture. So use the, use the torus sum to realize the indeterminacies. So then, then I really get equality of the um, in, in ZM choose 3. So I've got rid of the indeterminacies. So I've changed my surface system, uh, but now these, these invariants are equal. Now if I could just arrange for the MIJKs to be equal, then, um, so if m, i, j, k's are equal, then that would imply, since these are equal, and re these, remember, is m, i, j, k minus t, i, j, k in each of the coordinates, so that would imply that the t, i, j, k's equal, and then we saw that t, i, j, k's equal um, plus equal class words implies borden, and then we're done. So all I have to do to get the MIJKs equal is to arrange for the class words to match up. So if I can get the class words to match up without um, changing the uh, without changing the, the triple linking number, then I'm done. And that is just another picture like this. So I have, uh, I have, suppose I have two clasps here, and these, and these correspond to two, two elements in this clasp word, but they're the wrong way around. I want to switch them. So what I do is I, switch, is I do uh, the finger move, but the three-dimensional finger move that we heard about. I mean, we heard about the four-dimensional version lots, but I just take this surface, and I take my finger, and I push it along here until it comes out through here. So here's the, here's the finger, and there's the, and I get it. So I get a new intersection here. This one, okay, no longer goes to here. Now it goes here, along here. Um, so the outcome of this move is, uh, first of all, changed. Uh, change the order of these two things in the class word, so eventually I can fix the MIJKs, and, and in fact this changes MIJK by one, but I get a new triple point, so I also change the TIJK, and therefore the difference doesn't change. So I, so I fixed the mu, I, the, the triple linking number, which is the difference of these two things, but I've sorted the class word out, and so eventually the, um, I can make the class words equal, and then I'm done. So that's the end of the proof. Thank you, let's eat lunch. <laughs> that Chris Davis had a first paper which was um, a special yeah. case of your theorem, but he stated it um, only in terms of C complexes, right? Yes. So do you have your generalization? Is it equivalent to having homeomorphic C complexes? Uh, yes. 
<laughs> so, so it means that the ribbon and circle intersections don't play any role in the, yeah. Right. I mean, well, they could they could appear in the class words, but the result is the, the same. So, if you have two, if you have two C complexes that are homeomorphic, then um, you can you can run the same thing. Once you if if the triple and mill invariants are equal, then the links are bordant. And then it doesn't matter where it doesn't matter which service system you use. You, you can then just sweep the C complex through. So I raised something because I wanted to write. Yes. Yeah, so, so there was a preliminary paper by uh, Chris Davis and uh, a student of his called Grant Roth, who proved the, this this theorem in the case of linking number zero, which I should have mentioned. So thanks for mentioning that. So there's this idea of a surface system of higher weight. I guess maybe it's a little different, but like from um, Tim's memoirs paper, do you think that there's like a, a similar theorem about higher order link or Milner invariance? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like you'd have to use a different method to prove it. But at least it's not obvious to me how. But. Well, it, yeah, no, that that would be that would be great. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to. Do you, do you think something like that might be? I think it, true? yeah, I, th I think it um, it should be true. There should be some version of of kind of a, a, a higher surface system, just just like um, the ones in Tim's memoir, which um, and then some kind of condition on higher Mills invariants modulo more intricate indeterminacies that ought to imply the same uh, similar kind of thing. So to realize these indeterminacies, you're not just summing on one tor torus, you're summing on one torus for each component, or yes. each of the m components? OK. Uh, there's, there's, I, I, well, whatever, whatever it takes. Well, no, just because yeah, just it's like written as that sum, so like, oh, OK. Well, you, have to do, you may have to do this multiple times. So the indeterminacy is, is, is saying that the, the difference between them, between the two invariants, lies in the span of those things that I said, and therefore, uh, you may have to, whatever the coefficients of the span is, you may have to do this operation. Oh, okay. um, yeah. I mean, there's some, there's some cleanup that I kind of missed out about mm -hmm. that you have to do uh, with, with smoothing to make sure you, that you still have an embedded surface afterwards. And that's, right. so there's a little, yeah. there's a, little, a few details that I skipped. Like yeah, and then you can worry about that and it's, yeah. it's you have to. I, I didn't talk about it. Already a few minutes late for the lunch. We don't want to risk that. So Sorry. let's thank the speaker. Again. <laughs>